Penny Chuck Pond, spelled P E N N I C H U C K Pond, is a small lake located a little over two miles away from Nashua, New Hampshire, and holds the most fabulous treasure ever known to this country an incredible diamond necklace commissioned in France by. Marie Antoinette in 1788. Marie Antoinette was the wife of King Louis XVI, uh, who, of course, we know was guillotine. He was the last French king. In 1788, Marie Antoinette hired a famous French jeweler to design and to fabricate the most elaborate diamond necklace the world has ever seen. Her agents went throughout Europe to search and purchase the finest diamonds available. After the necklace was crafted, it was described as the most stunning and extraordinarily beautiful crafted piece of jewelry the world has ever seen. With dozens of very large and superbly cut diamonds, the cost at the time was equivalent to about $1 million. At the same time, the French Revolution was picking up steam and Marie Antoinette was more and more concerned that the peasants would confiscate her precious jewels, including the necklace, and so she packed the necklace into a small box made of metal and hid it in the wooden trunk along with other items, other jewelry, uh, and shipped it to Eastern Canada, which contained many loyal Frenchmen. In the meantime, the French Revolution reached its bloody climax, and Marie Antoinette was guillotined in 1793. And even though the person in charge of the necklace was never identified, around 1790, so the three years before her death, a Frenchman with an Indian companion brought a wooden trunk from Canada into Maine and consequently into New Hampshire. They stayed in Nashua for about a week, behaving in a very secret ways and talking to almost no one in town. And then they parked the wagon, rode away towards northwest, and only about two miles later they turned southwest and kept going next, right next to the Penichuk Brook. A few minutes later they ended up at Penichuk Pond, build a cabin there and settle in. For the next several years, they would not receive anyone at the cabin, and the Indian had to return to Canada several times, but on his last trip, the Frenchman was so worried about the safety of the trunk that he buried it on the shore of the lake, placing a large rock on top of it. Before his Indian companion returned, the Frenchman died. The Indian buried him and then he returned to Canada. While in Canada, he wondered what happened to the trunk. But when going through the Frenchman's belongings, he came across an entry in his journal stating that the trunk was buried under the rock on the shore of the lake. Not until 20 years later, the Indian returned to New Hampshire to the pond looking for the trunk but found many rocks on the shore and could not locate it. Uh, he actually came back with a constable and together they looked by, but could not find it. Many treasure hunters tried to locate it years after but without results. In 1983, Boy Scouts who camped on the shore of Penichuk Pond found sticking pieces of wood, old wood, out of the sands, remnants of the wooden chest, as they confirmed 
uh, later through the troop leader actually was more knowledgeable obviously in what happened and he confirmed that this this was so old and and had the lock and everything was definitely the chest the wooden chest so that the, re the remnants of that wooden chest were right near the area of the water line of the lake and of course uh, the scoutmaster knowing the story of the lost diamond necklace looked with boy scouts for it but despite the efforts nothing was found if discovered this diamond necklace would most likely be worth at least tens of millions of dollars most likely priceless today and possibly it just lies below the surface in a metal box if you enjoy this program please like it subscribe it and share it here is additional information from previous video on sandy gordon a ruthless evil and fearless pirate in early 18th century uh, considered by others as insane as well so he has accumulated an incredible wealth in gold and silver coins that remain buried to this day on White Island, New Hampshire. So as a young lad, Sandy Gordon was always in trouble uh, to the point that parents threw him out of the house and he wandered the streets spending most of his young life in jail. He started his career as pirate on the ship called Porpoise where he was so disappointed with his duties of constantly cleaning the deck and polishing brass fittings and painting and so on, which he considered insanely boring. So he started stealing from his fellow sailors to make it time pass by more, interestingly. The captain of that ship uh, was John Herring. He had with him an 18-year-old daughter, which was not considered a good idea in those days, and a bad luck among the sailors. Young Gordon often would find a way to talk to the young girl. Uh, Martha Herring was her name. In a short time, the two of them became very friendly and started meeting in secret. So when one of these days, uh, he came into Marta's cabin in the middle of the night. The captain, her father, suspecting something, walked into the cabin and caught them embracing. The captain did suspect that Gordon was stealing as well. And so he gave him a harsh sentence of 100 lashes, which he, he gave uh, he administered himself. It was a brutal scene as Gordon lost consciousness and was dripping in pool of blood. After being released 30 days later, uh, young Sandy Gordon returned to his duties on the ship and was told that he would be removed from the ship at the first port. Gordon uh, was full of hate towards the captain and was able to conspire mutiny with several of other crewmen, which did happen and after seizing the captain, uh, young Gordon gave him 100 lashes, which killed the captain. Afterwards, he was thrown overboard. Uh, he took over the ship after uh, killing its captain and became pirate. Uh, however, despite the success he had with his crew uh, raiding other ships and accumulating a lot of treasure due to his cruelty and insanity and because he would hoard all the loot to himself his own crew cast him adrift uh, in the boat of Scotland's coast <clears throat> which he was able to reach and where he was stranded for quite a while one day a ship approached uh, where he was stranded in search of fresh water and as soon as they came on land, Gordon helped them find uh, the fresh water and uh, started asking about who was the captain of the ship, who turned out to be Edward 
Teach, also known as Blackbeard. And somehow he found himself as one of the pirate Blackbeard's crew and distinguished himself with bravery and skill as a seaman. As a reward, Blackbeard gave him his own ship uh, that Gordon named the Flying Scot. After a relatively short time, the Flying Scot was filled with treasure estimated in millions. He decided to sail to America to settle and came upon a white island on his way off the coast of New Hampshire. He settled there for time being, built a cabin, and buried all his treasure nearby the cabin. He enjoyed life there for about a year until a fleet of British warship was sighted uh, in the distance. Uh, Blackbeard, who was also on the island the same, at the same time, uh, flee right away with his crew, but Gordon decided to stay and fight. And so the fighting ensued, in which uh, Gordon was outgunned and was about to lose his ship, was about to lose his battle. So he locked himself in his ship and blew himself up along with everybody on board. Everyone who, now, who knew about the location of the buried chests filled with gold and silver coins perished. So these treasure chests are estimated into many millions of dollars and are still buried there to this day. If you enjoy this program, Please like it, subscribe it, and share it.